I think there are three categories of RV people. Those that know their numbers and are towing under the manufacturer recommended rate, those that know their numbers and are towing over the manufacturer recommended weight, and those of us that have no idea. Which one are you? So today we're gonna to go over how to weigh your truck and RV, what the numbers mean, why you might not be able to tow as much with your three quarter ton or even your one ton truck, why we really didn't notice that there might even be a problem, and some real world numbers that are very eye opening. So these types of videos can be somewhat overwhelming with all of the information, but I'm gonna keep it as concise as possible and it really is important information to know about RVing. Something we haven't done yet is weigh the new fifth wheel and our truck. Chris is just setting up the app right now, finishing it, and that way we don't have to go inside and it's really quick and easy to just roll up and use your app to, to weigh on these things. We're in truck stops all the time getting fuel, so we go past these all the time and we're in a hurry and we just forget to just do it. No. See, it's really cool because it recognizes where you where are. You're at. If it's not correct, enter in to search for it. But it is correct, so I'm going to confirm it. There it is. What do you? Your face is frozen. What do you? Th I'm trying to read it. Hmm. Yes, I'm going to have to read those numbers. I'm not sure if they're good or bad. <laughs> okay. So this might seem scary at first to the average RVer, but weighing your rig at a truck stop on a cat scale is really easy. You don't have to use the app, but it's a lot faster if you do. This saves you the hassle of running inside to talk with the cashier and using the horrible intercom. The app is called Weigh My Truck, it's free, and it looks like this. So first pull onto the scales and make sure each one of your axles are in their own cement pad in between the yellow lines. These are separate scales and that's how you get the individual axle weights. Once you're on the scales, follow the directions in the app or press the intercom button to start. You'll then get numbers that look something like this, but to get all of your numbers, you do have to drop your trailer and go back through the scales one more time with just your truck. We'll go over all these numbers in just a minute. So first, let's define some of these numbers so we know what we're talking about. So the gross vehicle weight rating of a vehicle is set by the manufacturer and is the maximum allowable weight for a fully loaded vehicle. That includes the vehicle and everything you put in it. People, pets, gear, accessories, and the hitch weight from anything that you're towing. So this applies to your truck and it also applies to motorhomes. So your class B, your class C, your class A, they all have gross vehicle weight ratings. Now there is usually a sticker on the driver's side door or door jam somewhere that will show you exactly what the gross vehicle weight rating is for your vehicle. And even way back in our van days, we chose a Sprinter over a Promaster because the one ton Sprinter had an 11,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating while the Promaster had like a 9,300. And basically that means you can put more stuff into the Sprinter than the Promaster. Now a trailer is gonna have a gross vehicle weight rating as well. And again, that is the maximum allowable weight as it's fully loaded. So that includes the weight of the trailer itself, along with anything you put inside of it, any options from the manufacturer, and anything liquid in your tanks, like your freshwater tank or gray and black. So your complete overall number, gross vehicle weight rating. So let's go back and look at our example and the first weighing with the truck and the RV. The first two numbers, the steer axle and drive axle, are referring to the truck. The steer axle is your front axle and the drive axle is your rear axle. And because we have our RV attached to the truck, these numbers are including the hitch weight from the RV onto our truck. So now that we know a gross vehicle weight rating is the maximum allowable weight on our truck, if we add these two axle numbers together, we have the total weight and we can then compare that to our truck's gross vehicle weight rating number. Now to make things even more confusing with your gross vehicle weight rating on your truck or your trailer, is that there are individual safety limits on components within that number. So this is like your maximum tire rating, your maximum spring rating, or your gross axle weight rating. So each axle has a limit that it can have 
put on it. So you gotta kinda think as your gross vehicle weight rating is the all-encompassing number, but you can't put all that weight on one individual spot. So if you think about a truck, you can't put all of that weight in the back right over the rear axle because you're gonna be overloading that rear axle and possibly the tires back there. So it needs to be distributed somewhat evenly and those individual components will then tell you what the ratings are allowed for each of those. Now, if you drop the R and you just have gross vehicle weight, so not the maximum that you can put in it, but what it actually weighs, this is what you get on the scale when you weigh your vehicle, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. So again, on our example, even just weighing your truck and RV together once gives you a lot of info to go off of. You can see this drive axle weight or rear axle weight is 7,500 pounds, which is more than a single rear wheel one ton is rated at. So even without knowing any other numbers, you can already see that something is wrong and you might have to look at how you have things loaded on your truck or you might not even have enough truck for your RV. And last in relation to this is the curb weight and that's basically the weight of the vehicle as it came from the manufacturer, so including all the options, but not loaded at all. So it's kind of the base weight. Some people call it a dry weight, but in vehicles, it's mostly called a curb weight. So last, I'm gonna talk about payload, which is probably the more common number that a lot of people hear about, and it's a very important number to keep in mind. Sometimes with an RV or a trailer, they call it your cargo carrying capacity. So payload is usually referred to in a truck. Cargo carrying capacity is sometimes referred to in the RV world. And how they come up with this payload number is they take your gross vehicle weight rating and they take your curb weight or your empty weight and they subtract the two. And that gives you the leftover number, which is your payload. So the payload is the maximum amount that you can then add into your empty truck to reach that gross vehicle weight rating. But again, keep in mind, all of that payload can't go in one single spot. You can't overload the front of the vehicle, you can't overload the rear, and even left to right, you need to pay attention to that as well. So to put all of these numbers that we just learned about to good use, you really have to weigh your setup yourself to know exactly where you sit. And I understand it can be a very intimidating process at first because you're going to these busy truck stops amongst all of these truckers and it seems like there's everybody in a big hurry but really the cat scales are usually off to the side or in the back and it seems like from what we see the cat scales are a lot less busy than the truck stops themselves so it's not that intimidating and now that there is an app to use it's even simpler you don't even have to go inside you don't have to talk to anybody on the machine you just simply use the app and it gives you your numbers right there so the app is free but you do have to pay to get weighed which is usually around 10 or 12 dollars also, quickly on the other numbers here, the trailer number is not accurate yet because some of your trailer weight is transferred to your truck in the hitch weight. So you need to get your truck only weight numbers first before you know your hitch weight and your trailer weight. The gross weight number here is accurate and you need to check your manufacturer for your vehicle's combined gross weight rating to make sure you're within limit of that. In our experience, the individual numbers come into play before we even got close to this combined gross weight rating number. And the reason you need to weigh your truck without your RV is so you can subtract your axle weight on each weighing to give you the amount of weight your RV is putting on your truck. So again, that's your hitch weight. You then can add your hitch weight to your trailer weight from the first weighing and get your actual weight of your trailer. Confusing, I know. It took me a while to understand this. And how many times did I just say weight? Why we didn't really notice anything was wrong. You can't really just go by the look of a vehicle or the feel of the vehicle. While those sometimes are factoring indicators and can give you some information, it's not something that you can just rely on. So we didn't really particularly look overweight and we really didn't feel overweight. So here's just a few reasons why we didn't really notice anything was going on. 
One, we're relatively short for a fifth wheel at 33 feet. Many rigs are five or even 10 plus feet longer than we are. So it was a fairly compact setup with the truck and the fifth wheel. Number two, we have a diesel engine with over a thousand foot pounds of torque. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Even the new gas engines have a crazy amount of power. And with the diesels, you even get the engine brake, which helps a ton with going down, especially when you're towing in the mountains. So big diesel power going up, the engine brake keeps you in control and slow going down without riding your actual physical brakes. And it really does help a ton with the diesel engine. So speaking of the brakes, we do have the independent suspension with the disc brakes. So we have an extremely smooth riding fifth wheel along with an extra set of disc brakes, which helps immensely with the stopping power. And fourth and lastly is that it's a fifth wheel over a bumper pull. So the fifth wheel is connected to the bed of the pickup truck right over the rear axle and tires, giving it a much more stable connection than being connected behind your truck on like a bumper pull. So with high winds, we just didn't notice any type of sway in our fifth wheel. Even being 13 and a half feet tall, really not much sway at all. And especially coming from a travel trailer, it was a night and day difference. So you might not be able to tow as much as people are telling you. And I'm gonna use our Ford F350 Tremor as an example. The max fifth wheel towing capability of a 21 Tremor F350 with a diesel is 20,900 pounds. Now this is that really large number that manufacturers use for advertising and they throw it out there for people to really get enticed to buy these trucks. So while this number is theoretically possible to achieve with a very special, unique ordered truck, usually that's gonna have to be the truck at the absolute lowest trim level, zero options, nobody in the truck, no gear, probably not even including something like a heavy hitch, none of that to achieve these maximum towing numbers. So our F350 is a Lariat, which is kind of a, a mid-level trim. So it does have some options. Uh, it also had a moonroof on top, which does add some weight. The glass is heavier than the aluminum roof, but we could get nowhere near 20,000 pounds towing a fifth wheel without overloading immensely everything on the truck. So that's just how ours is set up. And, and that's just a, a really common truck that you're gonna find, an F350 Lariat, four by four. Four door, short bed truck. Probably one of the most common trucks out there. So let's look more at these real world numbers on the Ford F350 Super Duty, single rear wheel, Tremor with the diesel. And to do this, we're gonna look at the sticker on the driver's side door all manufacturers have a very similar sticker to this. And you can see right here, the sticker gives you the gross vehicle weight rating on the truck at 11,500 pounds. So again, that's the max the truck can weigh with everything in it, including the hitch weight from something that you're towing. Now also on this sticker, you're gonna see the axle weights. And really not enough people are talking about the axle weights. And I think really that might be one of the first things that can get overloaded especially when you're talking about a fifth wheel. I know when I was shopping around looking for trucks earlier, payload, payload, payload was the biggest number that everybody was talking about. But I had no idea what the gross front axle and rear axle, I had no idea what those limits were when, when we were shopping. It was all about payload. And the front axles rarely get overloaded in a truck because there's no storage or cargo up there. Not much goes up there unless you're putting on like a front hitch or something like that. The rear axle is really the one you wanna focus on because that is gonna be where all of the weight is gonna go if you have a truck camper or if you're hauling stuff in the back of your truck or the hitch weight from what you're towing. When Chris and I finally weighed just the truck with us, the dogs, the fifth wheel hitch, and the very bare minimum gear in the truck, we weighed 8,840 pounds. So you can see we added about 800 pounds from the original factory curb weight, and that's just the two of us with two small dogs and the bare minimum 
gear. So you can imagine a family of four or five, or if you had giant Great Danes or anything like that, it's very, very easy to add a lot of weight into your pickup truck, even though you don't think you're packing much. So that 800 pounds that we put into our truck is deducted from our payload. So we no longer have 3,443 pounds of payload. We have 2,643 pounds. So according to Alliance, the dry weight of our fifth wheel is 2,530 pounds. So we're good, right? That should be just enough capacity to tow the fifth wheel. But again, this is the huge mistake a lot of us make. We're looking at the empty weight of the RV, which Alliance says is 11,666 pounds. That's the empty weight before anything is added to it, including options from the factory. And since we added independent suspension, disc brakes, washer and dryer, dual pane windows, we actually weighed 12,864 pounds, which in turn is gonna increase your hitch weight. So a good rule of thumb that's out there is 20% of a fifth wheel's weight is gonna give you the hitch weight. And if you're talking about bumper poles, they say it's about 10% of the travel trailer that's gonna be transferred to the truck as hitch weight. So a better idea than using the empty weight of your RV is to use the gross vehicle weight rating, the maximum number that your RV can weigh because most of us are gonna eventually add and add and add and we're gonna be getting very, very close to the maximum allowable weight of the RV. So if you look at our truck with 3,443 pounds of payload, and you did the max at 16.8, you're still within that number. So a lot of us are gonna be like, yes, this truck is good to go. But you might be forgetting that you're not adding in your hitch weight, the people, and everything in it, which in our scenario was 800 pounds. And in many people's scenarios could, could be quite even more. So keep in mind that you need to look at your specific truck. And a lot of single rear wheel one tons nowadays have a larger gross vehicle weight rating than ours does. I've seen them up to like 12,400 pounds. So 900 more pounds than what we currently have. And your package and options do matter. So the Tremor is really not designed for the heavy, heavy, heavy duty towing. Really, it's not the best option for a fifth wheel. I think I'm gonna do a separate video on that. Now on the flip side, if you're talking about a three quarter ton truck, this gets even more crazy because they have much lower gross vehicle weight ratings. And sometimes those gross vehicle weight ratings aren't necessarily on the safety numbers on the truck, but might be on the registration side of it. Because in some states, registering a three quarter ton is a lot cheaper than a one ton. So the three quarter tons have more like 10,000 to 11,000 pounds of gross vehicle weight rating, which can easily be overloaded on the numbers uh, when you're talking fifth wheels. So that brings up the giant argument that's out there on the internet that my three quarter ton is the exact same as a one ton when I don't know if that's true or not. Usually there are some differences between a three quarter ton and a one ton, sometimes maybe not, but again, how do you really know if you don't go by the numbers that the manufacturer is giving you for those safety ratings? So to generalize, once a fifth wheel gets close to that 15,000 and above pounds, you're really pushing the, the higher limits of a single rear wheel one ton. And again, you don't really know the exact numbers until you weigh your truck and your RV. There's a lot going around this topic and I feel like there's another video or two on some of these individual things. So if you have questions or comments uh, about your setup, I'd love to hear them down in the comments below and I'd like to do another video or two on this topic in the future. I think it's really that important. I appreciate everybody watching and we'll see you on the next one. So what did we do after we found out about this? Well, tune in next week to find out. Ever wonder where the name Irene Iron Travels comes from? It's actually named after my online fitness and nutrition coaching business, Irene Iron Fitness. I help people move better, feel better, and eat better with strength training and real food. No fad diets, no harsh restrictions, 
no counting calories, and absolutely no processed food in a package. If you want to get stronger and feel better at any age, check the description below for the links with my new client special, or join in on our next and upcoming group challenge.